And welcome to the Thursday night edition of the Real Investment Hour. I'm Rich Rosso, certified financial planner here with John Camerianos and Mr. Clanton with his buttons. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we got a lot of stuff to talk about tonight, but... Before we do, we had a little bit of a breather in the market today, haven't we, John? Finally, it feels like the first down day in I don't know how long. I can't remember anymore. But the Dow was down 137 points, or about a half a percent. NASDAQ was down 21 points, about a quarter of a percent. And S&P was down almost 13 points, almost half a percent. So we took a breather today. And um, here's an interesting tidbit, uh, interesting fact to go along with those numbers. Yes. What's the interest rate in Argentina right now? Take a guess. The, the, the policy rate. Goodness, I have no idea. 60%. Okay. I was going to say 45, but um, <laughs> that's all, huh? I guess you won't be buying that car, that auto. You won't be taking that auto loan in Argentina, huh, Brent? <laughs> Can't even afford to put gasoline in it down there. Yeah. Well, the, again, you never know what moves the market from day to day. Sometimes it's noise. We always look at markets on a, on a weekly basis, although we track investments every day. Um, it's been talk about maybe tariffs on China. Yes. But I also think that the PCE, that's the gauge of inflation, mm -hmm. that rose to 2.3 from 2.2%. Uh -huh. That's the highest level since April 2012. Mm -hmm. So uh, still within the range, but we are pressing up against the Fed's preferred inflation target. Right. And I think that uh, that's when I sort of started to see the futures lose their uh, lose their footing this morning. Yep. So I don't think the, the tariffs help, but I always think it comes back to the Fed and inflation and where interest rates are going to mm -hmm. go. That's so, been a story, it seems like, for the past decade, really. Yeah. Low rates, higher market. There you go. Well, you know, um, I wonder if inflation is... Hit. Uh, first thing I will say is that I'm very happy that my animal crackers are now cage-free. Um, <laughs> I, You know, like, if we have cage-free eggs, chickens, right. now our <laughs> animal crackers in that iconic red and yellow box. <laughs> my grandmother would love to buy me these um, animal crackers. They're one of my greatest memories of yeah. uh, being a child, mm -hmm. along with Nabisco had some really cool chocolate wafer cookies ah, uh, yeah. that would be right next to these Barnum the, the, the sugar wafer cookies? No, no, no. They were round. Okay. Uh, just yeah. plain chocolate mm. uh, like disc cookies, like maybe made out of devil's food, but a little bit harder. Oh, yeah. Very good, but very plain vanilla stuff, like the, the animals. Plain vanilla chocolate. Yeah, just plain vanilla chocolate. And um, <laughs> that was a good one. But, I mean, I don't know. I, I love I animal crackers. I feel guilty about how I eat them. Like, I used to like to bite the heads off. First. I still do. Don't, you are heartless. Well, the new art doesn't seem to address any of the real underlying issues like ethics, exploitation, corporate greed. They're cookies. They're all right? cookies. They're, they are wonderful crackers. Okay. I love animals, but, and they look happier on the box. <laughs> they look happier not being in the cage. Well, any, any so, animal is happier with his head still intact. Right. Although I don't know how the elephant, giraffe, gorilla, and lion all are in unison walking together. You would think that yeah. one would piss the other one off or something, but they well, seem very happy. They could do it on the ark. They can do it in a box of crackers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's funny. In the crackers, they're all separated in corners. Yes. Like you have the lion in the upper yes. left quadrant. They're in quadrants, mm -hmm. right? Now that they're cage-free, they're all walking together. <laughs> you, when you open the box, you know what you hear? Kumbaya. <laughs> So <laughs> I, I can't I, wait. I can't wait for the treatment of this story by the onion. Right. That's going to be fun to read. Right. You know what? That is going to be. Yeah. I can't even imagine where they're going to go with this <laughs> because every day society gives the onion more material oh, than yeah. they possibly can use. You can't make this stuff up. No. So I still love my cookies. Now that packaging has been around since 1923. Right. It was a commercial artist, Sidney S. Stern. Mm -hmm. Um, and again, uh, it's uh, actually the New York Times reports that maybe the design's been in place since 1902. But this gentleman that wrote an article said, hey, this is my great grand uncle. It's probably around 1923. All I remember as a kid, this is, these are the cookies yeah. that we ate. Yeah. Okay. They were cheap, but they were very, very good. Oh, they were so good. And you soak them in milk. You, you bit off the heads. <laughs> Uh, Slather peanut butter between them and really, make a sandwich. I've never done that. Oh yes, wow! I did mm -hmm. it with fluff and nutter and cake but, frosting too. <laughs> well, sort of on the cake frosting yeah. thing. I used to do it with chocolate cake frosting and tell uh -huh. my grandparents that look, the animals are poopy. <laughs> she always looked at me and said, "You're not 
right. <laughs> so you know how I keep John for the show? How? Uh, we talk about all the market crises that we've lived through. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that's always like going down financial memory lane. <laughs> right. <laughs> but one thing that was interesting conversation we had was about the number. The because number. Because the number that people feel that is the magical number that they can finally retire. Is it a million? Is it 500,000? Is it 10 million? Whatever that number is. And uh, the funny thing is it's not connected sometimes <laughs> to, to, an, to right. a, a level of income. Um, people want a, a, a balance, a savings balance number. I want a million dollars. I want two or three million dollars. When I could understand the desire to, uh, that, to say, well, I need this income level. I need $100,000 worth of income in retirement or $50,000 worth of income in retirement. But very often, or sometimes at least, people come in to our office and they have a savings balance number that they want unconnected to an income number. And it seems arbitrary to me. It is arbitrary because you have to work backwards. So if I need... Let's just say I'm going to save 15 years and I my magic number is $4 million because it just sounds good to me. Right. Um, or and, because you think your peers might have saved that much and for some reason you think you need to save that much. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So if I work backwards and I go, okay, listen, I'm going to save X percent a year and maybe I'm a really good saver. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe I'm going to save 30, 40, 50 percent of my income because that's my goal. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to really focus on that right. for the next 15 years. And I've got a decent nest egg. So I worked it backwards. And then I realized my plan sort of fails. Mm -hmm. So then what do I do? I'll take the pension fund route. And huh. guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to say I'm going to make up the difference by asset class returns. Right. And I'm going to go ahead and give myself an 8 or 10% rate of return consistently every year. So and I'll, guess what? I'm going to hit my goal. So I'll back into my final I'll retirement. I'll back into my number like I back into the garage after four martinis. Right, right. With a 7% estimated or 8% estimated return. That, so. you know, listen, there's nothing wrong with aspiration of a number. Yeah. But you've got to work to John's point. You've got to know how much income you're going to need yeah. you're, you're, and you're, your needs and your wants and your wishes and work that way. If you're saving for retirement, you are saving to achieve a, a balanced goal because that balance will generate the income you need safely. It's all about the income you need. So it's not about, you know, competing with your neighbor. Well, I save this much and I save this much. It's about how much income do you need? If and you want to compete with your neighbor... Try to save more than they do or keep your car longer. <laughs> Maybe that's a smarter way to keep up with the Joneses. The Millionaire Next Door. It's a good book to read. I want to continue us on this topic when we get back. And we're taking your calls at 281-558-5738. You're listening to The Real Investment Hour on AM700, the voice of Texas. Lance Roberts returns Saturday mornings at 9, starting September 8th on AM700, the voice of Texas. A new professional version of Real Investment Advice is coming in September, but you can subscribe now for free at realinvestmentadvice.com and click on the RIA Pro tab. You'll have access to Lance Roberts' proprietary stock and ETF portfolios, analysis, and all of the critical investment information you need in one place. RIA Pro, the professional version of Real Investment Advice. Subscribe now for free at realinvestmentadvice.com and click on the RIA a pro tab. Lance Roberts returns Saturday mornings at 9, starting September 8th. First, I'm a fiscal conservative. At some point, you've got to stop spending money you don't have. Lance Roberts returns Saturday mornings at 9 on AM 700, the voice of Texas.